Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice because we have a choice. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I want to welcome everybody here this morning. I guess everybody's over at the uh, place getting ready to run. <laughs> Maybe they're trying to get a head start. <laughs> You know, one of the things that's on my heart today in the area of making reality, living a life of reality, you know, living in the matrix is difficult. And we do live in the matrix. That's, that's reality. Because there's another realm. And that other realm is where you and I came from. And the world and the ruler of this world does not want you to know where you came from. So if he can keep you in this reality, which is a temporary reality, instead of the eternal reality, he can keep you away from eternity. And he replaces, he's always trying to replace God's presence because that's where you and I came from. That's why everyone in this room wants to feel good, right? Right? There's not anybody who doesn't want to feel good. That's why people drink, get high, and use drugs and so forth and whatever, and, and always looking to feel good. The problem with the area of the rule of this earth brings a false deception and brings these other things that try to interpret God's presence, but really never can. Amen? Amen? And these things just bring us bondage and torment and fear and destruction because the enemy is out to steal, kill, and destroy. But there is a place where you and I can constantly enter in. And you enter in by busting through. Sometimes you, you ever see those, a balloon, and you can push a balloon until it finally pops. <laughs> well, we've got to press through all the time until that balloon pops. That's why he says, seek me with all of your heart and all of your strength. That's why praise and worship is an essential part of a Christian's life because it helps you press through into the other dimension, another realm, a realm where there's peace, joy, and righteousness, a realm where there's pure love, where you see things differently, you hear things differently. There isn't anything greater than know that God is with you, to hear his voice, and to sense his presence. But that's an area where you must press through. You must bust through all the time. It's a daily process. And that's where God visits us in dreams and visions and revelations. So there's something that's needed all the time. There's a word that is used out of the word disciple. A disciple is one who follows, follows Jesus. Unfortunately, there's disciples of Satan. There's disciples of all kinds of false things. There's many religions out there, but this is not about religion. This is about a relationship and a military operation. Jesus is known as the Lord of hosts, means Lord of the army. So we are actually on a military operation. His kingdom, there are soldiers, and we are called to be soldiers. So you and I have gone through all kinds of things in our life, wondering and sometimes many times crying out for God to help, help. But many times he sent an answer, but we ignored it, or we didn't want to do it his way. We always thought well, we had another way of doing it. We wanted to do the shortcut, you know, cut across the lawn to get their front door instead of going up the driveway, right? But in this, God is always trying to rescue us and bring us in because we're no good to him or anyone else unless we're trained. Amen? Training. That's a part of discipleship. It's training. And there's a major word in the word disciple that comes from it. It's called discipline. Without discipline, you can't be trained. And there are levels of discipline. And we talked about uh, before about the, the third level. And in this third level, there's a third level of discipline that you and I are required to reach. Not that we can't do things in the first and second level, but there's an area of discipline in your life and in my life and in the kingdom life where God moves mightily, where there's a place of access all the time. In Romans chapter 12 and verse 1.
Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. So the Word of God, this Bible, is a training manual. <laughs> it teaches military operations. It cannot be interpreted without the Holy Spirit. It can't be understood or else it's just a book. In verse 1 and 2 in Romans 12. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together because what you speak is what you eat and what you eat is what you become. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a what? A living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service or your responsibility. It says, do not be conformed to this world. In other words, the ways of this world, the sins of this world. Don't approve the things of the sins of this world. But what? Be transformed by the renewing of your mind or the renewing of your thoughts that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. In other words, there are three levels of discipline. There's what we call an acceptable level of discipline, where it's acceptable to God. But then there's a good level of discipline, where it's a next level. And then there's a perfect level of discipline, which is called the third level. Is everybody with me? To reach a perfect, in other words, to, when you, to reach the perfect Another, in this, he says there's an acceptable, good, and perfect will of God. But to reach that perfect will of God, you must reach the perfect third level of discipline. Because the third level of discipline is re reaching perfection. It doesn't mean that you, you know, people always look at perfection that you'll never make a mistake. That's not what it means. Perfection is a level of consistency. Is everybody with me? It's a level of what? Consistency. That's perfection. So to reach the perfect will, you must reach the third level of discipline. Amen? Because that's called the perfect arena of discipline. In 2 Timothy chapter 2. You know, God says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Many people are being destroyed because they do not know how to fight. They don't know a spiritual understanding. They don't real believe in demons. They don't believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. They don't believe in all these things. They're caught up in religion. And I want you to know that the powers of darkness is what brought religion to this earth, not God. God did not bring religion. He brought relationship. He wants you to know him. As a father, and you are his sons and daughters. Amen? 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the word grace means God's plan. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who are able to teach others also. You therefore must what? Endure hardship as a what? As a good soldier of Jesus Christ. In other words, you must be able to fight. And you must learn how to fight. Because there's no victory without a fight. It says, No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he's not crowned unless he competes according to the what? The rules. Competing according to the rules. This is powerful because this is where discipline must be implemented and also if anyone competes in athletics he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules the hard-working farmer must be first to partake of the crops consider what i say may the lord give you what understanding in all things again to compete according to the rules is to compete according to kingdom rules that means his integrity honesty and discipline we're competing now according to the rules of God, not alone according to the, the rules of man. Because the rules of man say, go ahead, you can smoke, you can drink, you can fornicate, you can lie, you can use drugs, you can do these things. It's okay. 
You can live a homosexual life, lesbian life. You can live all of these things, and it's okay. Because they do not take the rules and regulations according to the word of God. Is everybody with me? Now, I want you to know, in my visitation with the Lord, the first thing he shared with me was his word was true. See, because I never believed the Bible. So I'm only telling you, it's true. Not because someone told me, or not because someone brought it to me. I heard it from not only the word of truth, but the truth himself called Jesus the Christ. He's the one who told me the word of God is true. Is everybody with me? So not, not, nobody tell you no different. And again, this word cannot be interpreted without the Holy Spirit because it's the Holy Spirit who wrote this word. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. So we must compete. In other words, we must follow. That takes discipline to obey the rules and regulations through integrity, honesty, and discipline in the kingdom of God. So you must learn the kingdom life now. Amen? Amen? Kingdom living is totally different than worldly living. And that cannot be established or accomplished unless you are disciplined. The more disciplined you are, the higher level you are, the more trust you get from God. First Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 24. Let's speak it. Do you not know that those who what? Run, run in a race all run, but one receives the prize. Run in such a way that you may what? Obtain it. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we do it to an imperishable crown. Therefore, I run thus not with uncertainty, thus I fight not as one who beats the air, but I do what? I discipline my body and bring it under subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should be disqualified. Again, discipline your flesh and your soul to resist evil influence, and you must, and this allows you to fight because if you're not willing to fight, you cannot maintain a new life in the presence of the Lord. Amen. And by maintaining the presence of God is what sustains me and you. Remember, the one thing the enemy wants to do constantly is keep you from the presence of God. He doesn't mind if you read the Bible. He says, man, go ahead and read the Bible all you want. But he'll do everything he can to cause you to resist getting into God's presence. Because it's only God's presence that activates the word. Somebody with me. It activates the word. It illuminates it. And when it activates the word in you, then you speak it and it manifests the word outside of you. Is everybody okay? Yeah. Hebrews 5. Hebrews chapter 5. Third level of discipline. Can you trust someone that's disciplined? How about someone that's not disciplined? No. So if you can't trust them, you think God can? <laughs> Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 5. So also Christ did not glorify himself to become high priest, but it was he who said to him, you are my son today, I have begotten you. As he also says in another place, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with vehement cries and tears to him, who was able to save him from death and was heard because of his godly fear. Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he what? He learned obedience by the things which he suffered. And having been perfected, he became the author of eternal salvation to all who obey him. Called by God as high priest, according to the order of Melchizedek, of whom we have much to say, but hard to explain, since you have become what? 
dull of hearing. He was rebuking them. So obedience is learned. Has everybody got it? Obedience is learned. Learned, he learned obedience by his sufferings. Anybody suffered here lately? Man, you suffer every stinking day. There's something always going on in your life. It never stops. Does everybody get it? But you can have dominion over it. You can break through it. Amen? So you're going to learn by your sufferings. So here, Jesus learned obedience by the things that he suffered. But he was disciplined to maintain the course. See, you can allow these things to push you away, and then you stop learning. Only through obedience and discipline can you learn. It takes discipline to learn. Amen? If you're disciplined to go to school, you're going to learn. If you're disciplined to get in God's presence, you're going to learn. If you're disciplined to come to training sessions, which these are, these are not just Bible studies, why? Because we're part of a military operation. You're going to learn. You're going to learn the strategies of God, and you're going to learn the strategies of the enemy. You're going to learn how to overcome. You're going to learn how to fight. You're going to learn how to stay to get filled with the Spirit of God. And you're going to learn to interpret symbols and signs so that God can speak to you in multiple ways. But if you don't learn, you're going to burn. It's real simple. Or get burned. Or burn someone else. Because the enemy will use anyone. Remember, Deception is Satan's greatest weapon. And his power is fear. So those things he uses to manipulate people. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Hebrews 12 here. Hebrews chapter 12. And verse 5. He learned obedience by the things he suffered. Anybody ever make a mistake? Did you learn from it? Hopefully. Amen? I'd rather learn from somebody else's mistakes, but unfortunately, <laughs> I've, I've had enough of mine to write multiple books. Praise God. In verse 5, Hebrews 12. Let's speak it together. And you have begotten, have forgotten, and you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as sons and daughters. My son, do not despise the chasing of the Lord, which is called correcting. Nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens, and he scourges every son and daughter whom he receives. Now, this is powerful because everyone say after me. Correction. Is not, not rejection. People have a hard time with correct, being corrected. Man, you don't love me. Oh, stop it, you little soulish creature. That's not what it's about. Correction is not rejection. Amen. Correction brings direction, which brings protection. Amen? Amen? So you're going to be corrected. If you're on a training process and you're in a process, listen, if, welcome to Holy Ghost Boot Camp Officers Training School. Amen? So if you're in a place of learning and training, you're going to be corrected. Why? Because you don't want to step on a mine. Amen? You don't want to fall off the ship. And you don't want to fall out of a plane. Spiritually. So chastening... Or correction is not rejection. The purpose of it is, is to re reset us in the guidelines of the rules of the kingdom protection. Has everybody got it? It's to reset me and you into the guidelines of the rules of God's kingdom, which brings protection. Protection from what? Worldly influence. Worldly influence. This suffering is to impose obedience in our life to reach a third level of discipline. We're reaching. We're going for it. In verse 7 it says, If you endure chastening or correction, which is not rejection, but it is protection, isn't it? It's direction and protection. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as sons and daughters for what a son... What son is there that whom a father does not chasten? And if you are without chastening or correction, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate 
and not sons. So everybody can just expect correction from the Lord. Now, you may get correction or chasten or conviction from the word of God when you come in for training. You may realize, man, that's something I'm doing. I need to stop. Or I didn't know that it was offensive to God. Is everybody okay? Praise God. Again, this discipline is to impose a disciplined life to maintain new life. See, you can enter a new life, but are you going to maintain it? Many people come to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and then blow it. They go back out to what they've been doing. Why? Because they've not maintained a new life. And that takes converting of the soul. But to convert the soul, you must be disciplined. Discipline allows you to overcome emotional decisions. In other words, you do not go by how you feel anymore. You live by truth, not how you feel. In Luke chapter 22. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Third level of discipline. So discipline will bring discipline. When God chastens you, he disciplines you, right? And hope to you what? Get disciplined. <laughs> Reset the guidelines of protection according to the kingdom and be disciplined to maintain them. Luke twenty two thirty nine. 39. Coming out, he went to the Mount of Olives, and it, was a, and it was a custom, and his disciples also followed him. And when he came to a place, he said to them, pray that you may not enter temptation. And he was a, withdrawn from them, about a stone's throw away, and he went and knelt and prayed, saying, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will. Then an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthened him, and being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. Then he sweat, his sweat became like drops of blood. You talk about an inward fight. His spirit was so strong that it was, remember, the enemy was speaking to him, trying to discourage him. He was so strong in the spirit that his flesh couldn't even hand it, handle it. He began to sweat blood from his body. That's the fight he had within him to overcome. Remember, Jesus died in prayer in Gethsemane before he died on the cross. He died to himself. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. Then his sweat became like drops of great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And he rose up from prayer and had come to the disciples. And he found them sleeping from sorrow. And he said to them, why do you sleep? Arise and pray, lest you what? Enter into what? Temptation. Temptation. Now I want you to know that Jesus went and prayed three times. The first time he prayed and he came back and they were sleeping. He said, man, can't you pray with me for an hour? Lack of discipline. And then he went back and prayed again. And he came back and those guys were snoring. He said, come on. And he just let him go. And he went and prayed the third time. And that third time is when the blood came from his body. And he began to drip blood. See, he first shed blood in the Garden of Gethsemane by his own doing. Is everybody okay? But he, if he wasn't disciplined, if he wasn't willing to do the will of God, See, without discipline, you cannot fulfill the will of God in your life. Everyone say here, I've been sent on a mission to fulfill. Jesus had to reach the third level of discipline to overcome his emotional feelings of pain and fulfill the mission by sacrificing himself for you and I. That was the mission. In 1 Samuel 15,
1 Samuel 15. In verse 16. 15, 16. Now Samuel was a prophet. And the king of Israel was Saul. And Samuel sent Saul to go out and do a job. And he blew it. He didn't do it. He didn't complete what God asked him to do. In verse 16, it said, Then Samuel the prophet said to Saul the king, Be quiet, because he tried to make excuses. And I will tell you what the Lord said to me that last night. And he said to him, Speak on. And Samuel said, When you were little in your own eyes, in other words, when you were humble, were you not head of the tribes of Israel? And did not the Lord anoint you king over Israel? Now the Lord has sent you on a mission. Everyone say mission. And said, go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they are all consumed. Why then did you not obey the voice of the Lord? And why did you swoop down on the spoil and do evil in sight of the Lord? And, Samuel, and, and Saul said to Samuel, but I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and gone on the mission on which the Lord sent me and brought back Agog, king of Amalek. I have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But the people took of the plunder, sheep and oxen, and the best of the things which should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice to the Lord your God in Gilgal. So Samuel said to Saul, As the Lord is great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to heed than the fat of the rams. For rebellion is a sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as an iniquity and idolatry. Because you've rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected you from being king. Then Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and your words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Now, therefore, please pardon my sin and return with me that I may worship the Lord. But Samuel said to Saul, I will not return with you, for you have rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord has rejected you from being king over Israel. In other words, this just didn't happen one time. This was happened multiple times. Amen? So obedience is the highest level of discipline is obtained by the second level of discipline, which is consistency. Consistency is the second level of discipline. Is everybody okay? Now, this allows you and I to overcome and allow you to fulfill the will of God. So what it does is it turns your will to his will. It turns what? Your will to his will. And 2 Kings chapter 2. Second Kings chapter 2. Hallelujah. Remember, discipline leads to relationship. Relationship leads to love affair. That's the foundation. Simple. Without discipline, you're not going to get into a relationship. And the longer you maintain discipline, the longer you maintain relationship, becomes a love affair. Where you're, you're not just, oh, I love the Lord. You're in love. It's different. 2 Kings 2, verse 1. Let's speak it. And it came to pass when the Lord was about to take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. Now Gilgal was known as a place of sacrifice. 
In fact, we just read this. Then Elijah said to Elijah, Stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me unto Bithel. But Elijah said, As the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they went on to Bithel. Why? Because Elijah was disciplined. He's going through three levels here. Now the sons of the prophets who were with at Bithel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you not know that the Lord will take away your master from over you today? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Why? Because he didn't want anything to interfere. Look at the enemy's always going to do everything he can with interfering with your discipline. Has everybody got it? He'll do everything he can. And Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me unto Jericho. But he said, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. And the sons of the prophets who were at Jericho came out to Elijah and said to him, do you know that the Lord will take away your master from you your today? So he answered and said, I know, keep what? Silent. He was muzzling the voice of the strangers and anything to interfere. So many people just take heed of every voice. Oh, hallelujah. And Elijah said to him, stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me on to the Jordan. But he said, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. And 50 men of the sons of the prophets went out and stood facing them at a distance while the two of them stood by the Jordan. Now Elijah took his mantle, rolled it up, and struck the water, and it was divided this way and that, so that the two of them crossed over on dry ground. And it was when they had crossed over that Elijah said to Elisha, Ask, ask, what may I do for you before I am taken away from you? Elisha said, Please let me have a double portion of your spirit upon me. And he said, you have asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me when I am taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if not, it shall not be so. So he had to maintain a discipline to go through every place and follow him, constantly denying himself so that he can maintain an awareness and sight. He said, only if you see me will you receive this. And it happened as they continued on and talked that suddenly a chariot of fire appeared with horses of fire and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up by the whirlwind into the heaven. And Elisha saw it and he cried out, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and his horsemen. So he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and tore them into two pieces. And he also took up the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and went back and stood by the bank of the Jordan. And he took the mantle of Elijah that had followed, fallen from him and struck the water and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he had also struck the water, it divided this way and that way, and Elisha crossed over. Very powerful. So Gilgal was a place of sacrifice. Bithel, Bithel was a place of fellowship. And Jericho was a place of promise. And once they reached the Jordan, they'd overcome. Now he was in position. In other words, there was three areas of discipline he had to go through. Just like Jesus had to play, pray three times a breakthrough. He was going to follow no matter what. No matter what people were saying, no matter how he felt. That's one of the major things that people are always making emotional decisions. Not truth decisions. Ba not based by the word of God or the spirit of God, but based on how they feel. And it gets them in trouble every time. Every time. Because they live an undisciplined life. Amen? And Proverbs chapter 2. Proverbs chapter 2. Too many people quit because they think it's too tough. But it's not really tough physically. It's tough emotionally. Because that's where the battle's at. It's in the soul. The mind, the will, emotions, and imaginations. 
Every thought has a voice. Every voice has a presence. Every presence has an influence. Oh, yes. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 1. Is everybody there? My son, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you, so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding, if you cry out for discernment, and lift up your voice for understanding. If you seek her as silver and search her as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. Those are the uncompromising. He is a shield to those who walk uprightly. He guards the paths of the justice and preserves the way of his saints. Then you will understand righteousness and justice, equity, and every good path. So there's an area where you and I, in this, must be disciplined in prayer and praise and worship. We must be disciplined in seeking wisdom, knowledge, and understanding because it brings discernment. Discernment is a level of awareness. Amen? Discernment is a what? It is a level of awareness. Awareness of what? Awareness of what's going around you. And I'm not talking physically. I'm talking spiritually. Because if you cannot discern the spiritual things that are going around you, then you're going to be easily deceived. You'll be used by the kingdom of darkness. You know, people think that good people go home. They don't. If you're not producing the fruit of righteousness, you don't go home. Because the throne room is righteousness and justice and everyone will be stand before God. There's going to be many people who are going to say, but Lord, I was a good person. He's going to say, depart, I don't know you. Because he only knows his presence in someone and the fruits of righteousness. Does everybody get it? Oh, hallelujah. So you think we need discipline? Yeah. Hallelujah, we do. Proverbs 15, while we're in a Proverbs session. Discipline leads to trust. Yeah. Do you think it a, more per, a person that has more discipline is more respected? Yeah, because he carries a higher level of integrity. But again, we must learn obedience. These things are taught. And there must be a willing heart to want to learn and a willing desire to please God. Proverbs 15, verse 20. A wise son makes a father glad, but a foolish man despises his mother. Folly is joy to him who is destitute of what? Discernment discernment as a level of awareness but a man of understanding walks uprightly without counsel plans go what array but in a multitude of counsels they are what established so the lack of discernment is a lack of discipline in psalm 40 Psalm 40. You know, eventually people reach a place, and I know I did, where I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. I was tired of, but I didn't know that the battle I was involved in was a spiritual battle. I kept thinking it was a physical battle. Because when I was an addict out there, they told me it was a disease. No one ever told me it was a demon. Until that demon left my body, and I never used again. And I haven't used it in over 25 years. Don't need to. I'm high as a kite all the time now. Why? Because I came. I get in God's presence who is called the most high. So when you touch the most high, you get high. But it's a different high. It's a peace, joy, and righteousness that can't even be comprehended. It's a joy consistently. People think you're drunk. They think you're on something sometimes. Man, what you always laughing about? Are you on something? What is it that you have? I have Jesus. That's who I have. 
Psalm 40. Everybody there? Oh, glory. People that are miserable and call themselves Christians need to go home and lock themselves up in their closet until Jesus shows up. <laughs> and you're a Christian and miserable. There's something not right with you, man. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Angry Christians. No such thing. They ain't Christian and something's not right. Christ-like means God's presence. That means they're lacking discipline to get in God's presence. You know, the word says no man can tame the tongue, but the Holy Spirit can. Verse 1, Psalm 40. I did what? I waited what? Patiently. That's called endurance. Let me tell you, without discipline, can you wait? Heck no. You try to fix everything yourself and then blow it all over again. I waited what? Patiently. That's called endurance. I waited patiently for the Lord to what? Come and get me. <laughs> Give me an answer. Show me what I'm supposed to do. Listen, when you don't know what to do, you don't do nothing. You wait. He inclined to me and he heard my cry. He will answer you. He also brought me up out of the horrible pit, out of the murray clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my steps. Why? Because that person was disciplined to wait and endure. He has put a new song in my mouth, praise to our God. May Many will see it in fear and will trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust and does not respect the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. Many, O oh Lord, my God, are your wonderful works which we have done, and your thoughts towards us cannot be rec recounted to you in order. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. Sacrifice and offering you did not desire. My ears you have opened. Burnt offering and sin offering you did not require. Then I said, Behold, I come in the scroll of the book. It is written of me. I do delight to do your will, O my God, and your laws within my heart. Your name is written in the book. It doesn't get taken out of the book until your last breath. Now, if you serve darkness when you die, it gets taken out because who you serve when you die is where you go. So the only way it stays in is if you're serving righteous. Amen. If you're serving the Lord, if you're producing the fruits of righteousness. So that blows the theology that says once saved, always saved, which is not the doctrine of the Lord. Remember, who you serve when you die is where you go. Either the demons come and get you or the angels do, one or the other. Is everybody okay? Patience to endure, trained by discipline, obedience. Yeah. You're trained by your sufferings also. Philippians 4. Lack of discernment is lack of discipline. Let me ask you this. At your job, does your boss respect someone more that's disciplined or undisciplined? Disciplined. Will that person that's disciplined be rewarded? Oh, yeah. So how much more reward do you think God will give compared to what man? There isn't anything greater than working, walking in freedom. That is a reward of discipline because freedom is learned. Trust is earned. Philippians chapter 4, is everybody there? In verse 4, what does it say? What's the first word? Rejoice, not miserable. Rejoice in the Lord always. <laughs> That's why he says, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Why are the trials? For training. You're going to be challenged. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be what? Anxious for everything? For nothing. Be anxious for nothing. Now, anxiousness is fear, isn't it? Yeah. So if a person is undisciplined, he will be anxious. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, 
With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guide your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Anxiousness is fear. Fear will override a sound mind, override power to overcome, and it will override God's love and replace it with anger and oppression. Fear. Only discipline and a lifestyle of discipline, according to the kingdom rules, will have victory over emotional fear. Emotional fear. It's devastating. How many times anybody ever made a decision out of fear and found out, man, I wish I wouldn't have done that? Or out of anxiousness? Gosh. The devil always pushes you to make a decision. He'll push you. The Holy Spirit leads you. Although sometimes God has to push us in the pool to get cleaned up, you know, or to learn how to swim. There's that time where, you know, it's like, man, I just don't know what to do. And next thing you find yourself doing it. There's things that God causes for me and you because he's out to look. He's out for everything. He wants to bless us. He wants us to have the best life. He says he's come to bring us life and life abundantly, not to lack in anything. 2 Peter chapter 1. Second Peter chapter 1. If the Lord before you, who can be against you? In verse 2, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2. Let's speak it together. P Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God, of Jesus our Lord, as his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by the glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature. Let me share with you, the divine nature is a disciplined life. Amen? Amen. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust, but also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For these things are yours and abound. You will, if you do these things, you will neither be barren or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted and even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. And an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Discipline is a fruit of the divine nature. It's a fruit of the divine nature, expressing the Christ's character, righteousness, and justice. And I'm going to close it, 1 Timothy chapter 6. I'm not going to put it on a shelf and let it collect dust, right? Because it will bite you eventually. <laughs> Glory. Third level discipline. We strive to reach it. It's a place of perfection. And perfection reaches a place of consistency. 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 11. Let's speak it. But you, O man and woman of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness and godliness, faith, love, and patience, gentleness. Fight the what? Good, Good fight of faith. That means you, listen, if you're not a fighter, you're a loser. Amen. And I don't mean physically. I mean spiritually. Fight the good fight of faith, lay hold of eternal life, to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. 
I urge you in the sight of God who gives life to all things and before Christ Jesus who witnessed the good confession before Pontius Pilate that you keep this commandment without spot and blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ appearing which he will manifest in his own time. He who is the blessed and only poignant Continent, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone has immortality, dwelling in an unapproachable light, whom no man has seen or can see, to whom be honor and everlasting power. Amen and amen. Third level of discipline. It's available for any believer. Everything is available for every Christian. But too many people compromise become complacent and lazy. They become comfortable. Okay, this is all I need. Until something comes across their path and kicks their butt, then they realize they need more. You must be disciplined to be a first striker as a fighter every day. Because if you don't strike first, you will be struck. Remember, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Easily, easily defeats people. And the devil knows the level of the presence of God on your life, and they know the level of your discipline. They know. They see many Christians as weak and cowards, and many of them strong, whom they fear. Many people feel demonic forces. Instead, they should be fearing me and you. So it's time to man up and woman up and become disciplined in our lives and reach the third level of discipline so Christ can express himself and we can overcome all things and bring glory to his name. Amen? Amen. Father, we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask that the seed that is imparted in us will be protected by the blood and grow and bear fruit for your glory. In Jesus' mighty name.